fair deal. I'll take care of it tonight. Let me do it, Jordan. I'm older. Ain't got so much to lose if anything goes wrong. When it came to killing Big Jack Mahoney, we agreed to let the cars decide who'd get the job. I got it, and I'll do it. Steve Holden, just arrived in town. What do you want? Well, I'd like to look up an old friend of mine. Thought maybe you might have heard of him. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Name's Jack Mahoney. Big Jack. What about him? Nothing. I'd just like to look him up, that's all, if he still lives here. Well, he lives here, all right. He practically owns the town. Where did you know him before? Down Texas way. Five years ago, Jack and I were in the same Ranger outfit. Probably find him over at the saloon. Thanks, mister. There are things you remember to keep in your heart and promise never to forget. Like when Mother told me about the birds and the bees and I can hear her telling me, yeah. All the satin and lace and a beautiful face don't mean anything. You gotta get a gun and go after the guy if you wanna get a wedding ring. By the moon's silvery beam, you may look like a dream on a lovely night in spring. But you gotta get a gun and go after the guy if you wanna get a wedding ring. You can beat around the bush until the day you die. You'll never win him with a wink or a sigh. You gotta get a gun and go after the guy if you wanna get a wedding ring. You can trap him. Even have to scare them with a gun and go after your guy. You looking for someone? Yeah. I'd like to see Jack Mahoney. What about? I don't see where that's any concern of yours. You don't, huh? Well, get this straight, mister. Nobody gets to see big Jack Mahoney unless I know what his business is first. Steve! Buck high, Ranger! You long-legged galoot! That's <laughs> great to see you. So it's Big Jack now, eh? You always were too big for your britches. You must have gotten my letter. I didn't know you could write. Well, I took a chance that you could read. <laughs> Steve, you couldn't have come at a better time. You'll be on the ground floor one of the biggest things this country's ever seen. So? Come on to my office. You don't seem too happy about Big Jack seeing an old friend. What's the matter? Freddie will take your job? Drink, Steve? No, I still take my water straight, Jack. Same old Steve. Think I've changed? Well, it's a little soon to answer that one. But I'd say you're considerably more prosperous. This is nothing. I own most of this town and controlling interest in several of the richest mines. The West has just begun to grow, Steve. It's big. Biggest, richest territory a man ever dreamed of. And I want you to have a piece of it. <laughs> no, not for me, Jack. No, sir. Yeah, there's more to it than fancy clothes and a soft life. This country has to be built. It's rough and tough. It needs strong men. Not weekly.
Miss Molly, I'd never gamble with this. How much? I'll give you a 50. See? on me, boys. Everybody up at the bar. Oh, split. Oh, Jack, Pete Walker just left. Broke? Everything he had. I didn't like the look on his face. Silly old fool. Come into my office. This is twice the amount that you lost. Now, you're taking it, and we're going into partnership. Partnership? From now on, I'm going to make that property of yours pay off. Well, thanks, Big Jack, but heck, you know as well as I do, that property of mine ain't worth a hoot. Me and my burrow been over every inch of it, and there ain't a trace of mineral on it. From now on, that's my worry. Now, go on home. Well, don't you want a paper, a deed, and a signature or something? I got your word for it that we're partners, haven't I? Well, sure you have, Big Jack, Well, but... that's all I need. Now, go on home and don't ever come into my place again. He's the most generous man in the world. Generous nothing. It's just good business. Strong help the weak. You with me, Steve? My hat's off to you, Jack. You sure have come a long way since being a tenderfoot ranger, but I still don't see where I fit in. <laughs> now do you see where you fit in, Steve? Yeah. I'll stick around a while. Good. We'll have to make you legal in town. I'll have the mayor appoint you city marshal. How's that for a starter? Anything you say, Jack. Buck high, Ranger. <laughs> Buck high, you long-legged galoot, you. <laughs> Remember the fire of 41, I was shingling the schoolhouse fire. When McGinney drives up just a cone to beat the breeze, and he yells, I gosh, there's a fire. Well, I climbs down and I gets my farmer's hat, and I calls out my volunteers. I wound up the siren and laid on the bell. I ain't seen such a fire in all my years. When I called out my volunteers, get the bucket. When I called out my volunteers, get the bucket. There was Pee Wee, Gene and Cy, and Charlie and Red and I. When I called out the volunteers, the wind was sure blowing when we got to Murphy's place. Murphy was broke out in a rash. Well, he didn't mind the house a burning flat to the ground. Save the barn, boy. She's plumb full of mad. <laughs> <laughs> the fire got the depot and the silver box saloon, and a spark got the hotel ablaze. There in the window stood the lovely Widow Jones. We got set for a grandstand play. Oh, yeah. Well, I called out my volunteers. And the engines. I called out my volunteers. And the engines. We lost 61 men. Three engines and a pump. When I called out the volunteers. The town was really lit up. You could see for 20 miles. Jim Smith lit out for the mire. He looked like a comet with a smoker trailing out, for the seat of his britches was a fire. <laughs> we fought like crazy to save the Hawkins house. I says, I'm sorry for you, lums. Well, he smiles at me and says, she ain't a total loss, 
The chimney's still a standing by gum. <laughs> well, I calls out my volunteer. Hands up! I calls out my volunteer. Hands up! There was Pee Wee Six and Sty and Shorty and Doug and I. When I called out the volunteer. When I called out the volunteer. <laughs> Boys, that was fun. Get to the engine back in there, will you? Well, howdy, Big Jack. Say, we're all ready to go. All we need is a blaze someplace. Steve Holden, meet Chief Smiley Burnett, head of our local fire department. Steve's our new marshal, bud. Well, I'm just plumb glad to know you, marshal. Say, maybe us big city officials could get together for a friendly game of checkers somewhere, someplace. Sure, we'll do that somewhere, sometime. You ready to go for a ride today? Sure am, Big Jack. Saddle up the horses, Smiley. What are we waiting for? Well, it's about to do it. What did your grandmother print about me in the paper this morning, Buzz? Something terrible, I suppose. Oh, uh, she's an old lady. She don't know what she's talking about. Buzzy's grandmother runs a local paper. She seems to be against everything that I stand for. We have one thing in common, though. We're both mighty fond of Buzz. Well, here you are, Mr. Big Jack. You know, Buzz may be a little slow on the ground. But on a horse, there's very few men that can keep up with him. Ooh. Tell Steve Hole in the rally cry of the ranger outfit in Texas. Buck high, ranger, or bust. Buck high, ranger. Let's go, Tommy. Yippee! Hello, Marshal. We might as well take care of it while the kid's out of town. Take care of what? I can see you haven't read the papers yet this morning. If Maddie Barrett isn't slowed up, she'll have the miners around here so riled they'll start a shooting war. The boss wants us to throw a scare into her. Uh, just a minute, you take it easy. Don't do anything about this lap, talk to Jack. What's the matter, don't you believe me? No, I don't. Jack wouldn't give orders like that. That's just where you're wrong, mister. And I'm carrying those orders out whether you like it or not. You can't fool me, Jordan McRae. I learned the truth out of one of them that was there and saw it. You drew lots to see who was skilled, Big Jack, and you got the job. Lucky for you, you missed last night. That's all I can say. All right, Maddie, you know. The next time, I won't miss. Killing Big Jack's not the answer. He's got to be shown up for what he is. Uh-oh. Better light out, Jordy. I'm going to have company. Sort of figured I would have after they'd read the paper. Scoot! No. They'll just beat you to a pulp if you try to interfere. They won't hurt me. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Matt. We don't want anybody hurt around here. I'll just take that gun. All right, men, go to work. Stop where you are. We warned you, Matty. And I'm warning you. Touch one thing in this shop, and I won't be particular who I shoot. You can't get away with this. Let's talk it over. Anything I have to say, you can read in the paper. And I've got plenty to say. The Durango Kid. Throw down your gun. And easy. Holden, you tell your boss there'll be no more rough stuff, or he'll hear from me in person. Now, get out. And keep walking. Go. Give me one of your guns. They'll be back, Durango. You can't fight Big Jack. You seem to be doing pretty well. You stay inside this building. I'm going to keep them busy. Spread out around the building. If Durango comes out, shoot him on sight.
That was sure swell, Big Jack. Well, just remember what I told you. Think big, act big, and you'll be big. Isn't that right, Smiley? Yeah, I get that way just eating too much. Where you been? Chasing the Durango Kid. The Durango Kid? What's he doing around here? The Durango Kid always shows up when folks are in trouble and need help. Is that right? Well, this time he's here to make trouble. He's after your hide, boss. He told me to tell you to lay out. We'll talk about that later. Same time tomorrow, Buzz? Sure, Big Jack. Good. That's an engagement sparkler. Oh, I'm so happy. Gosh, it's a beauty. You finally roped Big Jack. Did he set the date for the wedding? Uh-huh. Don't let him get away. Oh, don't you worry. Oh, golly, I'm so happy I could sing. Why don't you sing, Carolina? Hey, fellas, pick up the instrument. I just feel so romantic I could sing, too. Oh, no. Couldn't somebody start a fire somewhere, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Before my eyes, an ailment that I can't disguise. There's no cure for me, it said, cause it's in my heart and not my head. A shady lane, a passing train, a spider on the ceiling. Everything looks crazy, cause I'm in love. A billy goat, a sailing boat, an old potato peeling. I know it all sounds silly, cause I'm in love. These things I see I've seen before, but just paid no attention. My heart starts doing nip up when just his name is mentioned. The answer's yes, and that's no guess. I've got that thinking feeling. The whole wide world so wonderful, cause I'm in love. Everything looks crazy. Oh, she's in love. Everything looks silly. Oh, she's in love. These things I see, I've seen before, but just paid no attention. Her heart starts doing nip ups when just his name is mentioned. The angels sing a wedding ring, a cottage in the country. That's why I'm so happy. I'm singing with a bird. Surprise for you inside. Oh, Jack. Well, I had to throw a special dinner party to celebrate our engagement, didn't I? And besides, I needed a special occasion so that you could wear this. Oh, it's beautiful. You've got to learn to save your money. Not where you're concerned. Lovely. Hey, it must be Steve. Come on in, you big galoot. You're holding up a celebration. Oh, Steve, look what Jack's given me as an engagement present. And you haven't even seen the ring. Well, congratulations, Carolina. I hope you'll be very happy. I plan this little supper for just the three of us. And look, Steve, champagne. And I had my boys Pony Express this ice all the way from the mountain. Well, none for me, thanks, Jack. But, Steve, this is a wonderful occasion. 
You don't seem very happy. Is anything wrong? Maybe the job of Marshall's getting you down. Could be. Cheer up, Steve. We've got another reason to celebrate tonight. I got a letter today from the best surgeon in the East. He tells me he can fix Buzzy's leg just as good as new. Oh, how wonderful. I'm making arrangements to send Buzz back to him. I'd do anything in the world for that youngster. Maybe you'll find out there's some things you can't do. I doubt it. Buzz thinks you're the greatest guy that ever walked the earth, Jack. Supposing you had to live up to that picture. What's eating you, Steve? Some of your men tried to wreck Matty Barrett's newspaper today. That couldn't be true. Tell him he's wrong, Jack. Is that all that's bothering you? Matty Barrett and I have been locking horns for a long time. Too long. I think she should retire. It isn't just Matty Barrett, Jack. In one day, I've been able to see a lot of things and ask a lot of questions. Maybe your plans are big, but I don't think you are. Maybe I've been wrong about you, Steve. Maybe you're no better than those mucking, grubbing miners that are standing in my way. And if you do feel that way, you'd better get out of town because there's no room for you. No, I'm not getting out. I have a job to do as marshal, remember? Come on, Carolina, let's celebrate. Beginning tomorrow, I'm gonna prove that Steve Holden's wrong, and I'm right. Legal notice. No ore wagons can pass this point unless 10% of load value be paid in cash to Big Jack Mahoney by order of the owners. We'll see about that. What's this mean, Walker? I don't know nothing about it. It says by order of the owners. You own this land, don't you? What's Big Jack Mahoney got to do with well, he's, it? He's my partner, but, but I didn't know he'd do a thing like this. You're sold out to him. Take it easy, Jordan. Pete Walker hasn't anything to say about this. Are you men ready to pay your toll? We'll see your rot first. Big Jack can't block the only road out of the canyon or force us to pay one red cent. I'm driving my wagon through. Hold it, Fulton. You can't interfere in this, Holden. I'm here to see that the law is upheld by both sides. For the time being, there's nothing you miners can do. Pay Big Jack his toll. If you want to get your ore through. We'll get our ore through, and we won't pay a toll. In that case, I'd have to place you under arrest for trespassing. My advice to you fellows is to hold a meeting. Talk things over. See, the honest marshal has already made a big hit with the miners. All right, Walker. We can put the sign back up now. to shoot our way through. How many of you men are in favor of stringing Jack Mahoney the nearest lamppost when we reach town? Oh, Getting rid of Big Jack is still my job. And I intend to keep it. I promise you, Big Jack will be in Boot Hill before another sundown. I wouldn't make a promise like that. The Durango kid. I wasn't exactly invited to this meeting, but I thought I'd come anyway. You're giving up any ideas of killing Big Jack Mahoney, Jordan? It's the only way, Durango. As long as Big Jack is alive, he'll squeeze us for everything we've got. Your problem's getting your gold out. You'll still stay alive. What do you mean? Give up any idea of a shooting war, and I'll show you how to get that gold ore out without paying toll. What about Big Jack? If my plan doesn't work, I'll take care of him personally. I'll go along with that. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, then it's agreed. Just let your ore pile up at the mine. When the right time comes, I'll show you how to get it out.
And with this special patented Smiley Burnett wetter downer, there's really no reason why any of you firemen should be scared or afraid of frying in a fire. <laughs> well, howdy there, Buzz. You got here just in time for my demonstration. Now, we'll take, for instance, if you're standing in a bed of blazing embers clean up to your neck, and you feel yourself starting to broil, all you do is to pull on this special Smiley Burnett release cord, and what happens? You win a prize. <laughs> no, you don't win any prize. You get just the right amount of cool water trickling down over your sizzling epidermis. That's your skin. Just the right amount of cool water to keep you cool and comfortable. Pee-wee, fill up the bucket for me, will you? The man says make with the water bucket. That's right. You fellas set fire to that straw right over there, will you? Smiley, I'm afraid you'll have to bend down so I can get the water up in the can. Gosh, Molly, you really gonna walk through that fire? Buzz, I am about to demonstrate the simple application of a scientific principle that'll leave me free from harm. Watch this. Boss, I think I found out what you want to know. Durango's talked the miners into holding the gold the other side of Walker's Pass. Instead of using wagons to haul it, they're going to try to get it out on a pack train. You sure? They're planning on using some trail that goes around the pass. You won't collect a cent of toll. If the miners succeed, I'll be a laughing stock in this town. Well, they don't have to succeed. Supposing they should have the bad luck to run into outlaws while they're hauling that gold out. I won't go along with that. What's the matter with you? Steve Holden been talking to you some more? Steve Holden has nothing to do with it. Well, he's sure going to be laughing louder than anybody when this whole town learns the mistake you made in sewing up Walker's Pass. Shut up. Well, you told me yourself. Never threaten anybody with an empty gun. Well, Durango and the miners are calling your bluff, and you'd better start using some live ammunition. You know when they're going to take the gold out, or what pass they're going to take it over? No, but it ought to be easy to find out. Go ahead. Jack, what's happened to you? What do you mean? You just don't seem like you. This talk with Fulton about the miners getting their gold out, I don't understand. Women aren't supposed to understand everything that goes on in business. You uh, going riding with Buzz today? No, I'm too busy. Too much on my mind. Hi, Buzz. Hello, Steve. Hi, Marshal. Why sit down in the mouth, boy? Well, I've been telling Buzz that Big Jack's probably tied up with some important deal or something. He'll be along in a minute now, Buzz. He ain't never been this late before. Hi, Buzz. Jack said to tell you he won't be able to go riding with you today. I, I guess he's too busy, huh? Well, not exactly. He isn't feeling very well. Is he sick? Well, nothing to worry about. He'll probably be feeling fine by tomorrow. Say, how about my riding along with you, Buzz? I'd like to. No, thanks. I don't need anyone with me. That kid's grandma knows everything those miners are up to. She'd tell us when they're planning to move out the gold if we put the right kind of pressure on her. Go after Buzz and take him to the hideout. Big Jack, is it, Flash?
Strangle. Any idea who those men were? They must have been outlaws. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't go riding by myself anymore, Buzz. Come on, I'll take you back to the edge of town. Hey, fellas. I got an idea. As long as Smiley ain't around, why don't we practice that number we're gonna play tonight? You know, the one we wrote ourselves called You Don't Need My Love Anymore? Okay, fellas, you start. Just last summer, you were my little rose. Each kiss you gave was as sweet as a dew. Now the rose has faded and the summer is gone, leaving me to cry alone. You don't need my love anymore. You say you found what you've been searching for. You don't need my shoulder to cry on when you're blue. You don't need my love right pretty, but Pee-wee, that ain't getting them pumps greased. Take them slow pokes in there and start shining some brass. Okay, Smiley, come on, fellas. Howdy, Buzz. Pee-wee, come get the horse, will you? Did you have a nice ride? Golly, Smiley, guess what happened? What happened? Three outlaws tried to catch me, but Durango showed up and drove them off. You don't say. Durango, holy smoke. Boy, Durango is sure a square shooter, just like Big Jack. Do you think Big Jack is real sick? Well, I don't know, Buzz. I haven't seen him. I'd sure like to know how he's feeling. I wonder if he'd mind if I went to see him. Well, if I was him, Buzz, I'd be right glad to have a visit from you. If he ain't any better by tomorrow, I'll go call on him. Gee, what do you think I could bring him? He's got everything. Oh, just bring him yourself, Buzz. That ought to be plenty good enough. Water my horse, will you, Smiley? Will he drink out of a hose? Yeah, but don't expect him to turn it on. <laughs> Here you are, Pete. Well, thank you, my friend. You know, the miners aren't your friends, Pete. If they was, they'd let you in on what they're doing. You think that, huh? Well, let me tell you something. I not only know when they're gonna take their gold out, I know what trail they're gonna take. I don't believe it. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, uh, you just take the trouble to be out by Boulder Fork about an hour or so from now. You see who knows what he's talking about, see? Pete! It's all yours, Marshal. Oh, Marshal? Marshal? I think I will take a little nap. Miners are moving their gold out over Boulder Fork Trail. You all set to take it away from them? It'll be a cinch. Me and the men are leaving right now. There'll be enough gold in that shipment to set us for life. Buzz! Buzz, wait! Hurry up! 
up, Smiley. Are you sure it's all right for you to be riding off again by yourself? Sure it is. All right, if you say so. Now take care of yourself, see? I don't want this boy disturbed for any reason at all. I just heard about it. How serious is it, Doctor? His chances are about 50-50. You've got to pull him through. Money is no obstacle. If you want to help Buzz recover, you'll stay away from him. The sooner he forgets all about you, the better off he'll be. What do you mean? You know what she means, Jack. Buzz was just trying to warn the miners that you were after their gold. Jack, you're worried about Buzz, aren't you? Well, if anything happens to that boy, Carolina, I'll never forgive myself. He'll get well. He's got to. I've been so wrong. But maybe Steve was right. He said my plans were big and that I wasn't. Don't talk like that, Jack. Look, you're not going to solve anything out here in the cold. Let's go inside. partnership, Big Jack. You're drunk. Put your gun away, Pete. Sure, I'm drunk. Your boys saw to that. They tricked me, got me to talk. But it ain't gonna do you any good. I thought we were friends. Friends? You haven't got a friend in the world, Big Jack Mahoney. You're almost too small to waste a bullet on. I wouldn't blame you for pulling the trigger, Pete. Maybe I got it coming, but 
hear what I got to say, and then you be the judge. Now, you ain't gonna talk your way out of this. Please give him a chance, Pete. Listen to him. All right, if you say so, ma'am. I ain't got nothing but the highest respect for you. Boom. Looks like I got here just in time. We gotta get out of here, boss. I got a wagon out back. It's loaded with gold. She'd better ride on it. Now, just wait a minute. Wait a minute, nothing. The miners know we got their gold, they'll be here any minute. We're not going anywhere. Are you crazy? We can't shoot it out against the whole town. We're not going to shoot it out. We're going to give the miners back their gold. I think we'd better talk this thing over. It's about time this outfit had a new boss. <coughs> Holding them back. I got an idea that'll get them off our necks.
within reach. I couldn't find him. Jack, the newspaper office is on fire. There's really a big job ahead now, Jack. There's a new town to be built, Steve. A new future. Only this time, it's not going to be a one-man job. You're right, Jack. The future of the West is every man's job. And there's a place in it for every one. Buckeye, Ranger, or bust. Oh, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the merrier we'll be. For your pals 